Hi everyone, it's Michael, and today we're going to be revisiting a topic that was very contentious, and I really didn't expect it. So the topic is the impact of LECA on pH. Now, um, I did my first video and a lot of people had a lot of things to say about it. And I had committed to revisiting the concept, but then I just kind of forgot about it. And then um, I did an update on how I water my orchids. And um, once again, people were kind of beside themselves about what I had uh, articulated and what my system was. Um, people expressed a lot of concern and thought that I was spreading misinformation. So I just want to kind of break this down into manageable pieces. So what I'm going to do to start off this entire discussion is measure what things have happened over the course of a week. This right here is the same nutrient solution I prepared in my updated watering and fertilizing video. So this, when I prepared it, and I'll link the video below, had a pH of 4.5. So now it's the exact same nutrient solution. Let's see where it stands today. So we are currently at 4.5. The pH of this solution has not changed. And that's been sitting there now for about a week. So that's the same nutrient solution I used to water this guy. So I'm curious now to see exactly where it is after a week's time. Because again, the argument is that LECA impacts pH. But in order to make that statement, I need to first remove the possibilities that the plant is altering the pH, that the nutrients are altering the pH, that the... Um, what are the other possibilities? That the water is altering the pH. So I need to eliminate all of those possibilities to come to a definitive conclusion that it is the LECA that is doing it. So let's see how things look after a week's time. Oh, I'm spilling everywhere. So this is the water left over in the water reservoir. And we are actually at a pH of 6.9. So, okay, Google, what's 6.9 minus 4.5? The answer is 2.4. So it's raised 2.4 on the pH scale. Don't judge me. Math off the top of my head is not my strong suit. <laughs> um, so it has changed. So we know that over the course of a week, this has gone from 4.5 to 6.9. But now the question is, how long did that take? Because if this has taken all week, maybe it's not so problematic. But if this went quickly from a 4.5 pH solution to a 6.9 solution, that merits our consideration because that means that we have to have a lower starting point on our pH when we are watering. So now let's go through the rest of this process. Okay, so now let's talk about how I'm devising this experiment. What I have is a series of controls here. So in this jar, what I'm going to have is just plain distilled water. In this jar here, I'm going to have the plain distilled water with LECA added. In this jar here, I'm going to have um, the container of nutrient solution without LECA. In this container here, I'm going to have the nutrient solution with LECA. In this container, I have, I'm going to do just plain distilled water with this plant. Um, and then in this one, I'm going to do the nutrient solution with this plant. So that's gonna help us kind of assess where this swing in pH is coming from. But I'm also framing it from this perspective of being within a 15 minute window. So once I get everything set up, I'm gonna set a timer for 15 minutes and we'll come back and see what has shifted and what has evolved. Um, and again, the objective is if it's changing that quickly, it does merit adjusting your pH down at the time you water, um, as opposed to watering at the, exact, uh, at the exact target pH and allowing it to raise over a period of time. One other thing stands to be said is um, the how, I've clean, how I clean my LECA. So actually I just finished um, another batch right here, but I'll link the video below. I need to update it because now I use Epsom salt to do a soak. But essentially I boil my LECA over and over until the water runs clear. Um, and then once that happens, I put it into a soak with one tablespoon of Epsom salt per one gallon of water. And I let that sit for about 24 hours to make sure that everything is fully leached out. Then I go through the process of re-rinsing it and re-washing it. I drained the LECA, and so this is the LECA that I'll be using. It has been properly cleansed, it has been properly treated, so this is a really good starting point. So just to recap, we have a container of plain distilled water with a starting pH of 6.4 here. Then we have the plain distilled water with LECA. Here, we have the nutrient solution with the starting pH of 4.5, and then we have the nutrient solution with LECA. Here, we have plain distilled water with LECA and a phalaenopsis. And then in this container here, we have 
um, the nutrient solution with LECA and Ephalanopsis. So now let's put 15 minutes on the timer. Okay, Google, set a timer for 15 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes, and that's starting now. We'll come back in 15 minutes and we'll talk through the results. All right, guys, 15 minutes has passed, so let's begin the process of measuring the ending point and see if anything has changed. So, again, I have a cup of plain distilled water here that I'm going to use to rinse my measuring tool every single time in between measuring, just to make sure I'm not cross-contaminating and getting inaccurate results. So, I'm making sure it's reading at 1. All right. Now, after 15 minutes, the pH of my plain distilled water remains at exactly 6.4. What that tells me is I can eliminate the possibility that the distilled water is changing the pH over a period of time. So now on to the container with the LECA and the plain distilled water. Ooh. All right. So now the plain distilled water and the LECA pelt are coming in at a reading of 6.8, which is 0 0.4 higher. Okay, so it, the LECA is impacting the rays, but just slightly. Now let's go ahead and give it a rinse in the plain distilled. Now let's check the plain nutrient solution. Remember, the starting point was 4.5. And the nutrient solution remains at 4.5. This isn't changing, which means that we can remove the possibility that the nutrient solution, or the fertilizer, is what's causing the swings in pH. So now let's go ahead and check the nutrient solution in partnership with, sorry, I'm just rinsing again, with the LECA pellets. Oh, I'm spilling. So the nutrient solution with the LECA is coming in at a pH of 6. So this jumped up from 4.5 to 6. So maybe the nutrient solution is amplifying the effect because the um, when it was just plain distilled water and the LECA, it only jumped up by, what was it, 0.4? But when it has the nutrient solution with the LECA, it's jumping up by 1.5, which is a pretty significant jump in pH. So, oh gosh, I didn't think about grabbing the container. Let me grab a container, one second. Okay, I'm back with containers. Don't tell my husband he hates when I use kitchen stuff for orchid stuff. Um, so, I'm gonna go ahead and pour out, and again, this was plain distilled water with LECA and a plant. All right, so now, this has been rinsed and plain distilled. Let's give it a good shake and measure where we are at. Now this is coming in at a pH of 6.8. So this is actually reflecting the exact same 0.4 jump that the plain distilled water with the LECA did. So that what that tells me is the plant is not impacting the pH either. It is just the combination of the LECA and the nutrient solution. This is so interesting. Okay, now we've got one more. Let me go ahead and give this one more rinse. Sure we're back at one, we are. Okay. And this is giving me a reading of 6.8. So once again, you guys, this is showing me that it is jumping up. It is it is the LECA. But what, what I didn't expect, and the odd thing that I wasn't really anticipating was that when it's just plain distilled water, it only escalates the um, it only escalates the pH by 0.4, or at least in these two instances, it only escalated it by 0.4. But when it's when it's the nutrient solution plus the LECA, that like seems to magnify the effect of LECA raising the pH. But suffice to say, the pH of the nutrient solution jumped from 4.5 all the way up to 6.8 over the course of a 15 minute measurement period. So this isn't something that's, oh, well, it's gonna take an entire week or a few days before the pH escalates. It escalates quickly and within the container. So that being said, I do feel justified in starting at a lower pH. Now, again, I, and I'll, do, I'll do kind of an all about 
nutrient availability video, and that'll be a separate discussion. But my sweet spot, I always say, is 5.5, but it's okay that my nutrient solution is starting lower at a slightly more acidic range because it escalates so quickly into a higher pH. Now, um, a lot of people express concern that that was going to burn the roots, which I understand. I understand that's scary, but it just hasn't happened. Um, my, all of my orchids seem to be in good shape and in good health. Their roots are continuing to grow. It hasn't impacted the green root tips, which are especially sensitive to root burn. Um, and it's how I've been watering for a long time and I've never encountered an issue with it. So here is, here is what I will say. I, I validate your concerns. I understand it's scary to water with such an acidic solution. In my personal experience, it has proven to not be problematic to start at that low of a watering pH um, because it escalates. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not some weird thing going on here. Perhaps the fact that I'm using tap water to um, do my full semi-hydroponic flush, maybe that is offsetting it and maybe that's why the roots aren't getting burned. Maybe that's the reason. Um, just because I can kind of track how quickly it's swinging doesn't mean that I can account for exactly why it's happening. And even though this is a more uh, organized experiment, it doesn't give me all the answers I need. But without having the intention of spreading any misinformation, I do want you to know that this is my system, this is what I've been using, there have been no negative consequences from it, and this is how I'm going to continue. This is a very accurate and valid snapshot of what is working for me. Um, so I will leave it at that. <laughs> I feel so, like I get so much anxiety talking about things like this because I've never, I've never dealt with people getting so irate about how I water my plants. And again, you guys, I've talked about this so many times. Um, we're orchid growers. We're in the business of nurturing life. So I always find it really, really interesting that people can be so hostile and aggressive when somebody presents a perspective that um, doesn't immediately reflect their own. So um, I would encourage you to be kind to others just like you're kind to your plants. Um, and hopefully that this has been informative. I know that this was, um, this was not what I expected, but it did open my eyes a little bit. Um, so <laughs> thank you so much for spending your time with me. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to click subscribe and have a beautiful rest of your day. Mwah! Bye guys.